You've lived a great life and done well for yourself. But what mark will you leave on the world? How will you inspire future generations? Stan Miller and Katie Beth Hand have helped thousands of people answer exactly those questions. If you've ever wondered, what will be my legacy? You're in the right place. Welcome to the Your Life, Your Legacy podcast. Now, here are your hosts, Stan and Katie Beth. Welcome to the Legacy Leaders Podcast. I'm your guest host, Attorney Adam Diamond, sitting in for Stan and Katie Beth today. I am a proud member of the Legacy Leader Network, which is a group of professionals focused on helping families pass on a lasting legacy. I'm the owner of Diamond Legal in Northern Illinois. Diamond Legal is your family's law firm where your future is our focus. We help with divorce, custody, wills, trusts, and real estate closings. Today, I'm really excited about our guest. Our guest is Jessica, Jessica Schneider with the Old Corner Tap in McHenry, Illinois. Jessica, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. So Jessica, tell me a little bit about your business. Yeah, so I thought we fit into your podcast pretty well because we are a family legacy. So I was really excited when uh, you asked if I could come on and talk. I own a historical tavern in McHenry. It was built in 1858. And since then, we have only had four different families own the building, which is crazy. <laughs> wow. That is a uh, quite the legacy of a business. Mm-hmm. So how did you end up owning a tavern? I mean, was that what you wanted to do when you were little? No. <laughs> this <laughs> is n- nothing of what I thought I'd be doing at this point in my life. <laughs> So my husband's family was, is the fourth family to own the, the tavern, and they ran it since uh, about 1973. Um, so his grandparents were the ones running the bar, and they ran it till about 2006. Uh, and then my husband's grandfather got sick, and so they just started leasing it out to different um, leases over the years. There's like three or four different ones in between. And in 2019... At 80 years old, uh, grandma decided she wanted to take back the business, fix it up a bit, and run the bar again. I did not think that was a good idea at 80. (laughs) So me and my husband were actually living in Seattle at the time um, and decided to move back from Seattle to my husband's hometown of McHenry um, to take over this bar because I've been bartending and doing mixology and all that since I was 18. So we're going on a lot of years, but (laughs) um, a couple. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I also ran a few breweries while I was out here too. Um, And that's just always been what I've done along with everything. I started out of high school because it was an easy way to make money. Um, And I just kept it up because it was a nice outlet and extra cash never hurt. So it was kind of an easy decision in the sense of I already knew all the distributors back here. And then it just sounded like a cool opportunity for us to continue the family legacy of the bar and uh, keep it in the family was the big, the big theme of everything. So you mentioned the word mixology. What mm-hmm. is that? Yeah. So bartending and mixology um, are sometimes like simultaneous um, with people, with what people say. But mixology is really the craft and the art of mixing cocktails. So it's not just your one liquor, one mixer, like a Jack and Coke or something like that. Um, Instead, we have multiple layers to these cocktails and we make them pretty. I mean, that's the other part of it, too, where you're not just getting a drink in a glass. You're getting a full experience of us making a cocktail from scratch. And honestly, really Instagram worthy drinks come out. So. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> makes it easy. <laughs> Do you use your mixology skills at the bar? Yeah, so I'm behind the bar all the time, even though me and my husband are the ones that own and run the place now. I'm still back there mixing drinks for everyone. That's that's what we do. And I kind of pride myself in some of the pictures and social media stuff that comes out because um, it, it does look really cool. So, mm-hmm. Do you create drinks for different themes or different seasons? Yeah, so we have our regular uh, menu, which is about 60 cocktails. Holy cow. 
And then we have a backlog. Um, every week we come out with a new cocktail every single week. And we've done that since 2020 when we opened. So I have what we call really over 200 cocktails because we keep a backlog of everything. So we can go back and make anything uh, for the most part. But just depending on ingredients, because a lot of the seasonal stuff we'll only bring in at certain times and all that. But um, yeah, and then, then on top of that, we do seasonal stuff. And around the holidays, there's always something fun. And then we do at the end of every year, 12 cocktails of Christmas, where it's like a drinking <laughs> marathon for 12 weeks or six <laughs> weeks. For six weeks between Thanksgiving and Christmas, we release 12 cocktails, which is fun. And then if you come in and try them all, you get a gift. Oh, cool. So what, what are some examples of the type of gifts you get if you try all 12? Well, when we first started, I mean, like any other business, we did not have a ton of money to just be giving out to people. So the first year was just like a pint glass with our logo. And then we did like an engraved bottle opener. Let's see, we just finished our fourth year. Um, then we did a whiskey glass. Um, that was probably one of the more expensive ones we've done. And then this past year was a mule mug, a real copper mule mug. Wow. That that. So Very yeah, with all our, all our logo on and stuff. And it's just a really fun fun thing to do and keep everyone coming during the holidays. Now, do you also serve non-alcoholic cocktails? Yeah, we pride ourselves in mocktails and more and more it's becoming more necessary. Actually, I probably shouldn't be announcing this on here, but I'm going to. We just found out my sister-in-law who works here with me um, because we have a lot of family stuff is having a baby. <gasps> Congratulations so. to her. Yeah, I'm super excited to be an aunt for the first time. It'll be great. But yeah, so uh, more than we thought we ever would. Now we're making mocktails for her. So yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. But I don't ever want to exclude anyone from coming out and having fun in the atmosphere that we have here. So if I can create something uh, that makes it look like and feel like you're drinking along with everyone else, that's really what I want to do. And I've even had some like on the baby train, I've even had some like um, ladies come in like, can you make me something that doesn't look like that looks like I'm drinking, but it's not alcohol because I don't want anyone to know yet. I've had that happen twice. <laughs> uh, you have like a code or a signal, you know, or like right. the card they slip the bartender. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I actually remember my grandma, this is going back a long ways. Mm -hmm. She wasn't, she didn't really like to drink. Okay. And, I, and when she was growing up a very long time ago, it was, you know, kind of customary. And so she would always slip the bartender an extra tip and ask for a screwdriver without the vodka. So orange juice. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but yeah, I mean, and then we even pick up some local stuff. Like there's a new brewery that opened up locally. That's a non-alcoholic brewery. So we picked up one of their things. Uh, I, again, I just never want to exclude anyone from coming out and having fun. Just because you don't drink doesn't mean you can't enjoy the atmosphere and the company. Now, you had quite the journey into owning and running the bar. Yeah. So did you learn any important lessons or insights on your journey from from Seattle back to McHenry? Yeah, I would say you just got to stick with your gut. I mean, your gut feeling is powerful if you actually listen to it. Um, I had a lot of people tell me, why are you doing this? Like, this is crazy. Um, on top of it, we opened during COVID. Cool. So I mean, July 2020 um, was our official opening month, and we got shut down again shortly after that. So it was a lot of punches back of, is this the right decision? Are we doing the right thing? Is this the time to do this? And I've stuck with it that whole time. And I mean, at one point, it was me, my husband, and my sister-in-law. We were the only people working here, and we were working every day. It was crazy. Uh, we've are very fortunate that since then my husband's been able to um, go back to his career because he really likes what he does and I'm here full-time with my sister-in-law and it's been great but yeah I just had to stick with it and even though I didn't really know what I was doing I don't have a business degree I was a special ed teacher <laughs> so I well, that, but that, that, that skill set probably translated over to people at the bar no I'm, I'm kidding bit. okay I mean, just children in general, I feel like trans <laughs> pretty well. 
So if you were to do things again, in terms of taking over the bar and learning to run it, what were some things you would do differently? Honestly, I think the only thing I would do differently is maybe be a little bit more prepared and take some business classes. I definitely probably would have had the opportunity if I was in that mindset when we started to do some online stuff during COVID and just get a better understanding of how to actually run a business. But since then, I've been very fortunate in There's a lot of workshops and our chamber here locally is amazing. Um, I'm actually going to an all day conference on Thursday um, on how to generate revenue. um, And it's an all all women business workshop, which is going to be a lot of fun. Um, So I'm fortunate to be getting that education on the back end now, but it would have been nice to know a few things before just jumping in. What are some of the key things you would have learned a little more about? like just in general concepts? I mean, just how to price things. I think that's been the hardest thing. And it's still an ongoing battle because you think, you know, from, so when I was a distributor, I knew how much we were selling things for, but I didn't know how much you were really supposed to upcharge, I guess, to our detriment. Um, I was going a lot lower than what we probably should have been charging but I've learned a lot from a couple other bar owners around here. And they're like, no, you should be doing this. And I wasn't afraid to ask questions. I'm not embarrassed to tell people I could be doing this wrong. Tell me what I could be doing better. And I'm very humble in that sense that I'm, I know I'm not business savvy in a sense in that way, but I'm always willing to learn and open up and I don't, I don't know, opening up a and maintaining and running and growing a successful tavern coming out of COVID, uh, if that's not the definition of hustle market sell success, I don't know what is. Yeah, yeah, so. I feel like I can do pretty much anything at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so what do, what do you like about what you do? I love the creativity of it. I mean, everyone always is like, oh, own your own business because you can make your own schedule. That's true in some ways, but at the same time, four hours are weekend hours, so I don't really get weekends off, but I've adapted and done stuff during the week and stuff like that, but yeah, I I just love the creativity behind it. I get to use all of my creativity because now with social media, creating um, like posts and stuff like that is a whole art form in itself, which is a lot of fun. I enjoy doing that. Um, I get to use my photography background that I like to to take pictures of everything and make sure our marketing's up to to par in that way. But I also get to socialize with people at the same time. I'm a people person. So being behind the bar and just having conversations with people is is what I enjoy. You had an interesting journey you were telling me about the other day when it comes to your vision of the, is Tavern the right way to describe it? Yeah, that's how we like it. I think it's more old school. So you had a very specific image you want the ta- one of the tavern to portray so socially, and you you learned a lot about managing social vendors, yes. um, without of course saying any names. But mm-hmm. I thought you could you explain to me a little bit more about that journey? Yeah. So we took over this tavern that was been in my fam, my husband's family. They're my family, really, too. But <laughs> it has been in our family for so long that I wanted to keep that history alive. That's what I wanted to share with everyone was that this place has been a bar for over 150 years. I mean, that's crazy. And all the history behind it kind of came about when we did some remodeling, which was really fun. Um, we found some items that we've displayed in the bar since then. And those are the kinds of things I wanted to portray. We're not just your average run-of-the-mill bar that anyone comes into. we We strive ourselves on the history. I literally coach my, all of my bartenders on the history. So they know the ins and outs of this building and um, all the things that it's been through. I mean, it's been through prohibition. It's been through multiple like major wars and everything. Like just imagining those people sitting at this bar talking about, I mean, the revolutionary war, like that's crazy. The civil wars. I mean, it goes back as far as some of that stuff for the town of McHenry. So who knows who was here even before that? That's crazy. And then most recently, all of just the big life events and the people that have been here. Um, and that's honestly one of the more fun things. Um, I'm getting off track. I'll go back to the social no, media thing. No, <laughs> no, you're spot on. I, actually, I was going to go deeper. And, and so tell me about some of the items you found. Yeah. So I, I mean, our ceilings are tin. And the walls are tin. 
And so behind that, so obviously that was big in like the 20s and 30s when people were putting that up. So they're as old as that. But even behind those is more. There's more ceiling back there. There's more wallpaper. We found hand painted wallpaper that people put up at one point. And I found like a bunch of square nails. We found some cool railroad coins that don't even exist anymore. A lot of pictures and signs and uh, just things that were literally buried in the walls. Like it was crazy as we were going through some of this stuff. And then with the total remodel, we tried to replicate what some of the old pictures that we found. So um, again, I got to use some of my artist skills. I actually um, grew up doing woodworking with my grandfather and my dad. So I was able to do that and I did a lot of the the bar itself. Um, I did a lot of the woodworking for that. So that was fun. And I got to use my painting skills and, and it was it was great. So but what's even better is the stories that other families have coming in here. So we have one family that owned the owned the tavern before we did, and they still come in. Her grandkids come in here and we get to talk about like what life was like for them when they were in here as children. Like <laughs> so many people have grown up in this place that it's just, it's crazy. And it's, I love hearing the stories. So I've even posted some of that stuff. I want people to know all that. I want people to know that this is a family business. It really is. And so that's really fun to portray. So to really like explain that to someone else coming in is very difficult. <laughs> which is why I got picky and decided to just take it over and do it myself because I wanted to portray that. But also I learned from them. I took classes from those people. Um, I made sure that I had a little bit of a background before I decided to do it myself and some insights on it. So they were all super helpful and I don't regret any of it. But yeah, that's that's what I wanted to show people. Yeah, So so it's a local tavern but so much more because you embraced the the long-standing history of both the building and the culture but also have some modern twists you're connected mm -hmm. with with other brew microbrews the non-alcoholic brewery we have mixology for custom cocktails so it's like this this really cool mix of old and young and creating that space to just mm -hmm. take a minute enjoy right. being around people so mm -hmm. I, now I remember talking to you that there may do you know with older buildings, me being in one myself as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there ever been any uh, kind of paranormal experiences there? I think there are. Um, <laughs> Tell me what about the ghost. I'm not a huge like paranormal person myself, but I do have a gut feeling. A lot of times, um, his name is Jacob. He was the first owner of the building. He wears a top hat, and I swear to God, I've seen him in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little creepy. And you get just like the heebie-jeebies sometimes down there because you go in our basement. I mean, because this building's so old. It's a field stone foundation. It's dirty. It's dusty. But it's part of the history of this place. It's cool. And just like to know like that someone put this together with their own two hands and it's still standing today is crazy. But of course, an old building comes with its quirks on everything. So, yeah, I, I know you have a connection with the ghost hunter. So we might we might have them in here just to see what happens. Uh, but of course, they need to come at like three in the morning. So for me, that timing just hasn't worked out because that's when I go to bed. But I'll Agreed. figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> so what is one of your biggest wins as a business owner? I think honestly, the biggest win is when I get customers coming in here that say, this is the only place they go to drink. This is the only place they like to go. This is where they bring their family and friends. This is where they're coming for their holidays. That's the biggest win for me is being able to create that space and those memories for people is amazing. Uh, we just had a bartender. Um, she left us knowingly. She It was a good leave for her. She just moved to Korea to pursue oh. her dream of teaching English. Um, but she was only here for about six, seven months. And so we had a going away party for her. And just to see the connection, the connections that she made in that short period of time was amazing. I mean, she made lifelong friends that she's still in contact with. And we're still in contact with her, too. So that those moments are really the big wins, being able to create that for people and provide that. Absolutely. 
the you know, you you've connected a lot with the community, mm -hmm. the, cha the chamber and the city. Can you tell me a little bit about that journey? That was hard. So we live in McHenry now. So we are residents in the same place that we that we own a business, which I think is a big bonus, too, because you get to see all sides of it then. But the chamber approached me like maybe six months after we opened to join. I joined. But for the first year, I had no idea the benefits that that, that could come of that. So I didn't really get involved my first year or anything. And the city honestly fought us tooth and nail for a little while uh, because we're coming in. It was this weird thing uh, with out of state licenses. So we're coming in with a Washington license, trying to open business, open up a business in McHenry, and they don't know our background. Mm -hmm. So they're thinking some out of towners are coming in, taking over at that point, which was a not very pretty successful bar that had a lot of police calls weekly. Ah. Uh -huh. So they see us coming into that and they're like, you have no idea what you're getting into. <laughs> Jokes <laughs> on them is no, uh, we knew exactly what we were getting into. We've known this building and this business since the seventies, but they didn't know that. And so nothing against them or anything, but it was just a very uh, enlightening experience to see what happens when people don't know who you are. Um, because today, four and a half years later now, I have amazing relationships with uh, the city members and the chamber um, and all the city council. Um, they're all, I would consider friends of mine and people I can go to with questions now. And they're huge supporters of us where if I have an issue, I can go to them and they'll, they'll help me figure it out. So that's been great. And the relationships from the chamber are something that is, you can't put a, a number on that. It's been great. Because now, now I have chamber, all these I have all these other business owners that are helping support me as well. So now, which chamber is that? The McHenry Area Chamber um, is okay. the one that I'm a part of. That's the only one I am so far because we have a lot of local ones around here, and they're all really great supporters. But I felt like staying in the city that we're in and live in was was a good option for us. So, what are some of the events that you support or host? Yeah, we do one big one every year. Um, so it's always the last Saturday in June. So it's coming up in a few months here. We host a food truck festival, music festival um, that benefits the school that I used to work at when I was here. So I worked at Alexander Lee Center for Autism um, for about six or seven years. And they're very good friends of mine. And I love those kids over there. So um, we do a whole street festival just to benefit them. Uh, that's kind of my thank you and give back to them because they did so much for me. But yeah, we this year we're open to host up to 15 food trucks and uh, 20 vendors and have two really big bands. And then we have uh, we get all of the business owners involved in our little street right here. We're not the biggest street in McHenry, but we all <laughs> love where we are and what we do. So everyone gets involved. They all help me out. Um, the dance studio does a little performance in the middle of the day. So you get to see all the little ballerinas that are adorable. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of the business owners are just out there helping and um, supporting this whole festival. So I started that. Um, that was something I wanted to do because we our street doesn't exactly connect to the other downtown districts. Mm -hmm. um, not as easily, at least. So you kind of we kind of got excluded from a lot of like the big festivals that happen in the area. But um, I went to the city and I was like, if I throw my own festival, what does that look like? And so now three years running, um, here we are. <laughs> That's fantastic. So, yeah. so if someone were taking over a similar business, what would your advice be? Know your area. I think that's the biggest thing. We knew our area and we knew what we got into, but we didn't realize how hard it was really going to be to establish a different name for this place. It was a shot and beer bar before. It was not doing good things for a while. Um, There's a lot of drugs that were happening over here. And we were hoping that other businesses were going to be moving in around the same time we did, and they didn't. So we almost felt like we were single-handedly trying to fix a drug and homeless problem with a bar. <laughs> <laughs> that seems a bit counterintuitive, Jessica. Yeah, it does. 
Um, but again, I stuck to my gut and I was very strict and forward with patrons, um, especially ones that were not, not great people and shouldn't be bothering the people in McHenry that need to be coming out here. So since then, other businesses have come in and we we're all supporting each other and trying to, to fight this and also try to find help for these people, though. I mean, it's really sad when you see people that have nowhere to go. And so they're just hanging out wherever they can find a place to sit down and they don't have any money to spend. It's really sad, but there are local places that are helping them. So we always direct them that way for sure. That would be my biggest thing is make sure you know what you're getting into and where you are uh, before opening. <laughs> <laughs> what I could, could you share any funny or interesting stories or experiences hmm. with the business? Yeah. Hypothetically, of course. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Funny ones. Everybody, literally everyone that comes in here talks about Grandpa Jerry who is my husband's grandfather. So he was really the face of the bar at the time. My husband's grandmother, she was here and um, she would help out. But Jerry was really the face of the place. And from everything I've heard, he was a clown. <laughs> 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 Makes a lot of sense on where my husband got it from. <laughs> <laughs> but not any specific stories, but he, he was just a great addition to this place. And for me to be living on his his dream of what the place could be is is amazing to me um and i take everything very lightheartedly and we have some some interesting cocktail names like a white girl whiskey and a, a giggle juice and a, a a couple other ones so we never take life too seriously around here ever what's the fun in that oh yeah yeah i remember you did something about some some special theme weeks like the harry mm -hmm. potter week and stuff like that can you tell me a little bit about that it was something we were just trying out uh, i'm not afraid to try new things and um my two of my really best friends they love harry potter so they came to me and they're like hey if we do all the planning can we host a harry potter week yep <laughs> so we <laughs> did uh and it was fun you get a lot of characters with that <laughs> But also just keeping it, we're not open on like the major holiday days, but I do like to provide a place for people to come and hang out during the holidays and stuff. And so we like to do fun things like we have an adult Easter egg hunt coming up. So that's a whole week where you can come in and find eggs throughout the bar um, and uh, there's coupons and stuff hidden inside them. So we always try and do things around around those times that are fun. Yeah. Well, Jessica, how can people find you? Yeah, we're, um, if you want to take a look at our website, that would be my first um, push. It's yieldcornertap.com. Uh, from there, you can get to all of our social media pages, whether you're an Instagram or Facebook person. Um, otherwise, uh, take a trip to McHenry. Um, you'll find us on the corner of 31 in Maine. We're literally, literally on the corner, so <laughs> uh, <laughs> not hard to miss. And yeah, we got some big fun plans coming for the summer and get outside and enjoy the weather. We have a brand new patio space we're going to really take advantage of this year. So, Fantastic. And we'll have links to all your info in the show notes if anyone's listening to this and they want, they want to find or follow you on social. Mm -hmm. So thanks for listening. This has been a Legacy Leaders podcast. I'm your guest host, Attorney Adam Diamond. And my super special guest today was Jessica Schneider owner of Ye Old Corner Tap in McHenry, Illinois. For more information about Jessica and her amazing place to relax, check out the show notes. Jessica, thanks again for joining me. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Your Life, Your Legacy podcast with Stan Miller and Katie Beth Hand. If you enjoyed the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. To find out more about Stan and Katie Beth, go to PinnacleLegacyLaw.com. You can also find links in the show notes.